Imagine a school where students can graduate as a simple calculator or become a wise oracle, able to answer any question. This school is called Artificial Intelligence, or AI. And now imagine that inside this school is one particular class that teaches its students how to learn from their mistakes and improve over time. That class is Machine Learning, or ML. So what's the difference between them? To answer that question, we need to go back to the very beginning. First things first, AI encompasses all the systems and approaches that aim to replicate human intelligence and decision-making. It's basically teaching machines how to think like us humans. On the other hand, ML is a subset of AI that focuses on teaching machines how to learn from data without being explicitly programmed to do so. In other words, it's about teaching machines to fish. Well, to code, really. Now let me explain it another way, because apparently one level of training isn't enough for some people. Okay, so remember that scene in The Matrix where Morpheus is trying to convince Neo to take the blue pill. He says, if you take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up tomorrow and you believe whatever you want to believe. But then he adds, if you take the red pill, you see how deep this rabbit hole goes. You wake up and you never go back. Well, choosing the red pill is kind of like choosing machine learning. It's a deeper, more complex path, but it leads to some seriously impressive results. On the other hand, taking the blue pill is like choosing traditional programming. It's a simpler path that leads to predictable outcomes. But wait, why would anyone choose the blue pill when they could have the one with Keanu Reeves? Well, it's not always about which pill is better. Sometimes it's about which pill is the right fit for the task at hand. Traditional programming is still the better choice for many tasks, just like how you wouldn't use a hammer to eat in Snickers. And sometimes, just sometimes, even the smartest AI and ML algorithms can't quite cut it. They need a good, old-fashioned programmer to step in and save the day. Now, here's the thing. AI is all about replicating human intelligence, which means that it has to be good at everything that humans are good at, or at least most things. We're talking about natural language processing, computer vision, decision-making under uncertainty, planning, learning, and even creativity. Meanwhile, ML is more specialized. Its main goal is to help machines learn from data and improve their performance on specific tasks over time. It's not trying to be a jack-of-all-trades like AI is. Instead, it's a master of a few. Okay, maybe one. So let me give you a little analogy. Think of a samurai training his student. The student starts out as a wide-eyed rookie who knows nothing about sword fighting. But with the guidance of his master, he learns the basics and slowly but surely becomes a skilled warrior. This is kind of like traditional programming. The programmer is the master and the code he writes is the sword fighting techniques. With enough practice, the student becomes a formidable samurai. And now, he can take on new challenges and fight against worthy opponents. This is kind of like machine learning. The algorithm is the student and the data it learns from is the opponent. As the algorithm trains on more and more data, it becomes more accurate and efficient at solving the problem it was designed for. And if the algorithm is lucky, it might even become a legendary samurai itself. In addition to that, AI is often associated with the concept of general intelligence, which is the idea that a machine can perform any intellectual task that a human can do. For example, passing a Turing test which is a way of determining whether or not a machine can exhibit intelligent behavior that is indistinguishable from a human. But let's be real, even the smartest AI out there is far from achieving general intelligence. We're still a long way off from having machines that can hold a conversation, make decisions in complex situations, and even understand sarcasm. On the other hand, ML is more focused on specific tasks, and it's already being used in a ton of different applications, such as image recognition, natural language processing, fraud detection, recommendation systems, and even self-driving cars. Okay, now let's talk about the different types of AI. There are four main types of AI, based on their capabilities. Reactive, limited memory, theory of mind, and self-aware. First up, we have reactive AI. 
these systems can process sensory input and respond to it in real time. For example, a system that can detect faces in images or recognize speech in real time. Then we have limited memory AI. These systems can store and use past experiences to inform their decision making. For example, a system that can recommend products to a user based on their past browsing history or a self-driving car that can use its past driving experiences to improve its navigation skills. Next up, we have theory of mind, AI. These systems can understand the mental states of others and use that knowledge to guide their own behavior. For example, a system that can predict how a person might react to a certain statement. Or a robot that can understand the emotions of the people around it and respond accordingly. Finally, we have self-aware AI. These systems have consciousness and can understand themselves as well as their place in the world. Now hold on, I know what you're thinking. Doesn't this sound like science fiction? Well, to be honest, we're still a long way off from creating any type of AI that is truly self-aware. In fact, some people argue that true self-awareness is something that can never be replicated artificially. But hey, who knows, maybe one day, we'll get there. All right, now let's talk about the different types of ML. There are three main types of ML, supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement. Supervised ML is like having a teacher. The algorithm learns from labeled data, which means that each data point has a corresponding label or target value. For example, if you want to build a system that can classify images of cats and dogs, you would train it on a data set of images that have been labeled as either a cat or a dog. The algorithm would then learn to classify new images based on the patterns it had learned from the training data. Unsupervised ML is like having no teacher. The algorithm learns from unlabeled data and must discover patterns and relationships on its own. For example, if you want to build a system that can group customers based on their purchasing behavior, you would train it on a dataset of customer transactions. The algorithm would then try to find natural groupings in the data, such as customers who buy similar products or customers who spend a similar amount of money. Reinforcement ML is like having a coach. The algorithm learns from rewards and penalties. It takes actions and observes the results of those actions. If the result is good, it gets a reward. If the result is bad, it gets a penalty. Over time, it learns to take actions that maximize the rewards. For example, if you want to build a system that can play a game, you would train it to play against itself. The system would earn rewards for winning games and penalties for losing games. Over time, it would learn the best moves to maximize its rewards. Now let's talk about some real-world applications of AI and ML. AI is being used in a ton of different industries to automate tasks, improve efficiency, and enhance the customer experience. For example, AI-powered chatbots are being used in the healthcare industry to provide patients with 24-7 access to medical advice. In the finance industry, AI is being used to detect fraudulent transactions in real time. In the retail industry, AI is being used to personalize the shopping experience for customers by recommending products based on their individual tastes and preferences. And in the manufacturing industry, AI is being used to optimize production processes and reduce waste. As for ML, it's being used in a lot of the same areas as AI, but it's usually used for more specific tasks such as image recognition, natural language processing, and fraud detection. Now let's talk about the current limitations of AI and ML. Despite all the hype, AI and ML are still relatively new fields, and there's a lot that we don't know. One of the biggest challenges is that AI and ML systems can be biased, which can lead to unfair or inaccurate results. Another challenge is that AI and ML systems can be difficult to explain, which makes it hard to trust them or debug them when they make mistakes. And finally, AI and ML systems require a lot of data to train, which raises privacy and security concerns. However, as the field of AI and ML continues to develop, we can expect these limitations to be addressed. And who knows, maybe one day we'll have robots that can serve us tea and also rule the world. 
So the real question is this. Are you ready to accept the red pill? Let me know in comments. And if you liked this video, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. If you found this content helpful, please consider supporting us through the provided means. Your support will help us continue to create high-quality educational content. Thanks for your support and see you in the next video.